So when I was uh, when I would learn typing as a child, mm -hmm. you know, because you remember back in the day you were forced. To, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Now is the time for all good men to join. Oh no! Now, now is the time, time for all good men to come to the aid of their country, country or their party. Is now? Is it now? No. no. Is now now? Well, that's <clears throat> that's one of the big uh, things we come into with Mondo Awakening is that you find yourself moving into a place of now, now, now. Not like in Be Here Now, which was a great 60s and 70s book. Still is a good book. Ram Dass. Ram Dass. Ram Dass. Um, you can't really be here now. It's, already, it's impossible to be here now. As long as someone there being here now, you're not in now, you're in being to be in here now. So. I see. I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 in other words, that this kind of beginning to focus on the present moment is a very useful practice saying like am I in the present moment it mm -hmm. is a good practice but then you can very well just go around all the time living in the mirage of living in the present moment by mm -hmm. saying am I in the present moment am I in the present moment but you're saying that there's a kind of feeling maybe associated with now 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 to me that feeling feels like an unchanging aspect of time that almost feels like eternity. Mm -hmm. Well, I, th I think that's what people mistake. They think now is just the intersection between past and future. And it's just past and future merging just keeps moving ahead. But it turns out, as you've experienced, that it's much more pregnant than that. It's much more powerful than just an intersection of past and future. It really has a whole urgency, uh, strength to it. And in fact, you find yourself in now and any slight movement out of being any place except now, you become all immediately clutchified or something. You actually become dis almost dysfunctional when you aren't now because now becomes such a powerful place. Well, and now is the place where you're not thinking about past or future. Mm -hmm. now, now is the experience of what actually is, mm -hmm. as opposed to the ongoing kind of like cognitive train of thought where it's saying, well, you know, in the past when this happened, and I did this, and that, I cook, so now later on I'm going to pick them up at the grocery store. Because um, then, of course, what you're not doing there is really experiencing not just like the beauty of the content of any particular moment, you know, that leaf, that person, that smell, that breath, but the moment itself has that power that you can't believe that it was there already before. Mm -hmm. You can't believe that now as it will just manifest if you'll just stop focusing on the past mm -hmm. and focusing on the future, has this force to it even, mm -hmm. I would say. There's a kind of unmistakable sense of being in it, not just because your mind is not occupied with these other things, mm -hmm. but because it kind of cuts you like a knife in a, mm -hmm. in, a, in a good way. You know, you just feel, oh, I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know, I am. Uh -huh. um. Yeah, and it's not being here now, it's not being any place else. I mean, if you can watch, if you got to flip those two, look at it that way and say, it isn't something you manifest, it's you something you cloud over. Yeah. And so it really becomes a process of, of removing not now, as opposed to manufacturing now. Right, because it's always here. Now it's never goes away. Now it doesn't go away. If you just notice it, <laughs> it's always now. Yeah. And so if you notice that it's always now, then you're basically you know in that now, unless you're busy noticing it. Um, you know, in, in practice, the self-inquiry questions can be good, mm -hmm. of course, for staying in now. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, one of my practices when I'm swimming, if I feel a little pain or discomfort or something like this, that brings me into a kind of I thought, like, what's happening? You know, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. uh, and what was, it was amazing one this morning was I was swimming and it was feeling just a little bit difficult. And I just asked, where am I? <laughs> when am I? Mm -hmm. Right. When, when in the stroke mm -hmm. am I? Mm -hmm. Where in the stroke am I? Mm -hmm. And it's very funny. Because, I mean, I literally laughed underwater, you know, like as it was happening, because you just see the body's just going. Parallel path. Yes. It's just now. It's the body is just right. now. Yeah. Um, whereas whatever little twinge I had yeah. was in my mind and so you can immediately kind of 
get a very good sense of when you're in that now right. and when you're not in that now by using the self-inquiry. Who would be here now? That's right. Well, it's also the, you know, the, the easy, quick, fast, fast check back is there are no problems in now. If you watch carefully when you're in now, there are no problems. I mean, now is perfect. Everything is here as it should be, just as it is. There's no place else you can go to that would be any better, and nothing can be taken away or added to improve it. That's true now, Gary, but what about later? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and what's, what's the tax status of now? <laughs> yes, right. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, it's really, no, I, I mean, I think that needs to be repeated. Like, no. now, there is no issue whatsoever. Nothing. Yeah. There can be no issue whatsoever right. in now. Right. Um, and so one needs to think about now as a kind of uh, actually existing utopia mm -hmm. that has been here all along, mm -hmm. but you're too busy commuting in the past and future <laughs> to, to notice, notice it. Yeah. Whereas, like, if you lived in now, you'd be here now. That's right. right? You know? That's right. Well, in fact, that the brain likes now. I mean, the brain that doesn't want to be conflicted past, future, and self and other, the brain loves now, and it neurochemically supports now. I mean, now is a very sweet place to be observed. And so coming out of now eventually becomes so, no, no, I don't want to do that, that you remain in now because there's a lot of dopamine support for it, and it's held there for a long period of time. And you want to stay there. You don't want to leave it. Of course, that begs the question of, you know, why most of the time most of us are not now knowing all the, in, in the now. Mm -hmm. You know, why, why is it that um, we're doing the equivalent, I think, analogously, of just burning our hand on the stove over and over and over <laughs> <Yeah>. again? <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like, the brain doesn't like to burn the hand either. Yeah. The hand doesn't yeah. like to burn the hand, so we learn. Yeah. But somehow we've developed culturally in a way that actually encourages us to burn our hand over and over, and over mm -hmm. again on the stove. Whereas, as you said before, once you start to experience the now enough, it does. It feels. It feels very bad to fall off of the now right. because when you fall off of the now, you, it it is the equivalent of burning your hand on the stove, basically. Maybe it's, we just don't have any experience or any teaching or any cultural or philosophical or religious support for the idea of something like this. Yeah. But you can be present now and not worry about your past sins or your future problems that you're going to have. You're just present now, and it's such a sweet yes space that you're not drawn to do anything except stay in that space as it is. Just remain there. Yeah, so uh, for other people who are not in the now, yeah. there's nothing in it for them to keep you in the now, basically. Uh, well, for others who are not in the now, yeah. in other words, don't even see that there's anything such a thing other than a futures market mm -hmm. or the past, mm -hmm. uh, that there's, there's, no, there's no leverage to be had from you being in the now. It's, it's in nobody oh, no, else's no, no, interest no. for you to be the, in the now. The, the fact, the, well, contrary-wise, as yeah. Alice would say, yeah. contrary-wise, uh, they're, they're disadvantaged. If I'm in the now and fully content and happy and nothing is wrong, I don't need to buy their car or their clothes or their, you know, make more money or whatever. This doesn't even apply. Okay, it's great. Nice. What's, what's going to happen to the economy exactly. if everybody's the in the now? The going to go away <laughs> if we aren't really hungry for new things or craving after the repeat of some past pleasure. Well, it is funny because, you know, this always gets said, yeah. uh, which is, well, what if, you know, people did just dwell in the now, mm. then mm. nothing would get done and, you know, the economy would yeah. tank and so forth. Well, first of all, the economy tanks anyway. Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it doesn't, it doesn't tank in a way that is... Right. Mutually, you know, beneficial for all concerned. It's just mm -hmm. this kind of sputtering engine that goes up and down, up and down all right. the time. Uh, second of all, if one will experiment with being in the now um, and experiencing that, that the forcefulness of that mm -hmm. mode of existence, you'll see that plenty of things get done. In other words, like you know, how many videos have we made mostly in the now? Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, so, really, uh, unrehearsed, coming, just sitting here and talking. Yeah, so the, the, the now is endlessly fecund and productive, and I would even say that nothing is productive except the now. Right, right. And you can see how much uh, your functionality degrades as soon as you move out of the now into past and future. And as I've talked before, I, I, I got over past and future because I was so terrible at predicting them. I mean, there was, I had no predictive value of any 
meaningful consequence, forecasting the future. And so I just gave up. I was no good at it. And so I find now is a much better place to be because better stuff arises. I'm present for what does arise as it naturally occurs. And I'm nowhere else. I know, but it's almost as if we fall into such a forecasting mode of thought, just thinking about planning for a moment. Yeah. That because we've never actually observed, you know, quote unquote, the future, mm -hmm. just coming into being out mm -hmm. of the now, because mm -hmm. we're so busy mm -hmm. planning, yeah. that uh, it's almost like it's like a bungee cord leap we're not willing to make. Mm -hmm. Saying, but what would happen if I just stopped insisting that I know what is going to happen in the future mm -hmm. and map it in advance? Yeah. Um, well, one thing that wouldn't happen is, is that you wouldn't feel the drastic disappointment mm -hmm. when the future isn't <laughs> what you thought it was. It's never what it, you It's simply it. other than whatever it is you planned for. Right. Right. And in fact, the more you plan, the more that comes out because the less flexibility there is right. in moments of time to make allowances for the fact that you're just operating on this model as if it were reality. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. you know, Darwinianly, we we're bred into trying to forecast the future. But we have this little tiny, little tiny processor with you know, kind of six, seven like, pieces of information at a time trying to forecast the future events in this massively complex, highly interconnected, dynamic world. It's just it is ridiculous to believe it can do that. So just give it up. Well, it's like a super powerful one of those coin-operated swamis, right? You know, <laughs> like, like will, will the video ever end? <laughs> I think it ends now. I think it ends now. Now it ends.